Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on OCV timing and uh, let's expand the discussion for whole time as well. Okay. So the first step what we'll be doing is we'll be looking into the circuitry for whole time. We'll be looking into the equation for the whole time and then try to convert the graphical representation into a textual format. S similar flow that we used for the uh, analyzing setup. Okay. So this is this is your circuitry and this is your clock network delay the, the the launch clock network delay this is the capture clock network delay this is the combinational delay and and the defining equations for whole time is is as follows it's like delta theta one plus delta should be greater than h plus delta two plus the hold uncertainty so uh, there are a couple of videos that we uploaded some time back for sta you might want to have a look into those videos to understand where these equations have actually come from okay so the first step is to convert these equations or basically this graph this uh, diagram into a textual format okay so let's let's do that and we did did this already for the setup timing analysis let's try to re revise this a bit so the launch clock will look something like this we have b1 of a which is mentioned over here plus b1 of y which is the cell delay plus b2 of a will be which will be the net delay b2 of y which will be the cell delay and so on so we did this already for the setup time and similarly we have for the capture clock network delay we'll be having the delta to represent it something like this it's b1 of a b1 of y b2 of a b2 of y b4 of a and b4 of y okay so now the equation which is the defining equation for hold theta plus delta 1 should be greater than h plus delta 2 plus the hold uncertainty let's try to bring it, to, in, it into a textual format so you have this data arrival time which is delta 1 plus theta where delta 1 uh, is the addition of all these delays plus the theta that is that becomes your data arrival time okay and the data required time is the delta 2 plus plus the whole time of the capture flop plus the hold uncertainty so these are basically we have classified two different sections we have classified the equation into two different sections of data arrival time and data required time okay so what the next thing that we'll be doing is we'll be putting some values over here and trying to calculate this slack let's take an example over here so let's put some values for example if you put 13 picoseconds for the net delay 43 for the cell delay and so on and if we have the combinational delay as 140 picoseconds or 0.14 nanosecond the data arrival time comes to 0.355 nanoseconds or you might just want to add up all of this and check whether this values are correct or not so pretty much it looks to it looks correct for me so data arrival time with this set of values is 0.355 nanoseconds okay now let's look into the data required time let's put some numbers so 0 0.13 0 0.4 043 0 0.021 and so on and we have this we had this hold values already in in the previous set of videos where we did uh, some uh, lectures on sta so the data required time after this set of calculations which is the delta 2 plus hold plus hold uncertainty that comes to around 0 0.303 nanosecond okay so this is very similar to what we did in the earlier videos for setup time the defining equations have changed in this case okay so the data arrival time minus data required time which is the slack in this case it becomes it comes out to be point point zero five two nanoseconds or 52 picoseconds which is uh, which is quite okay for us quite good number for us because we are we are uh, we are having a positive slack over here okay so now the next step will be to implement the ocv curve so we had introduced this ocv curve in in couple of videos back where we said that a cell a, a logical cell which was characterized to give a delay of 100 picoseconds or which was designed to build a delay of 100 picoseconds can give delay anywhere between 80 and 120 picoseconds okay and the reason being the the several variations we see while fabricating a chip so we discussed all this in the in 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 the section where we have talked only about ocv so we have talked about uh, why the cell delay can vary so in this case we have we again have four options as we had uh, talk, talked in the previous videos we again have four options over here where we can where, where either of them can be delayed by 20 percent or or the, or both of them can be delayed by 20 percent or increased or increased by 20 percent so we discussed the four options as well in the in the previous discussions for step timing analysis so let's move on over here in this case we'll be doing the real realistic and conservative analysis by by assuming certain things okay so what we'll do is we'll start with the clock pull-in 
so when we pull in the data arrival time so the way we have to achieve achieve the worst case analysis is to bring this number as low as possible and increase this number to as high as possible to a, to as a high or to the worst case number as possible okay to get a to get a worst case slack over here so if the design meets for the worst case slack it's bound to meet for any other conditions on the chip okay so that's the whole point so let's look into the clock pull-in uh, concept. So we talked about clock pull-in where we say that the data, the, uh, the clock network delay or the clock cells of the data arrival time, which are this one, the delays of this particular cell will be pulled in by 20%. So when you when you reduce the delay of each and every cell clock cell which is present over here, if you reduce their delay by twenty percent, the clock edge is supposed to is supposed to come towards the left hand side. Basically, we will be pulling in the clock towards the left hand side. And similarly for clock push out, when we increase the delay of data required time, or when we increase the delay of each and every clock cell in the data required time by 20% the it will actually eventually it will push the clock so clock the clock edge mo moves more towards the right hand side direction okay so we can either do a clock pull in or we can do a clock push out or we can do both we can be even more careful for hold because hold is just a single edge which is traveling across the chip so we can't take any 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 chances over here and so we want to be extra careful careful for hold analysis so in hold analysis what we'll do is we'll do a clock pull in and clock push out to get the worst case analysis to do a worst case analysis for the hold okay so data arrival time and data required time and when we say the clock pull in as we said that uh, for the uh, data arrival time will be do will be will for the data required time will be doing a will will be doing a clock push out and for the data arrival time will do a clock pull in so while doing a clock pull in the delta 1 value gets reduced okay it gets reduced so your data arrival time gets reduced and you are bound to see some slack you might see some negative slack okay that's that's achieved when you do a clock pull in and when you do a clock push out basically your your capture clock network delay you try you tend to increase the capture clock network delay and as a result of that the data required time gets increased and as a result of that if, you, if the data required time increase the slack is bound to be a, a negative number so basically we are we are stressing the stressing our limits and trying to do a more exhaustive check for hold because it's just a single edge that goes around and if we fail on hold there is no way to achieve it but for setup we still have a way where we can increase the frequency but if there is a hold analysis we are if there is a failure in the hold analysis check we are bound to see some metastable states and and so on so there are there are worse cases where we see that if a hold fails the the, the chip goes for a toss so so we are trying to be extra careful for in case of hold analysis so we'll do both over here we'll do a clock pull in and we'll do a clock push out and this will be a very good example to see what are the impacts of doing both for a whole time analysis and how the things can change over here okay so so we will take this particular curve as a standard curve we'll use a 20 percent variation also we'll uh, will do a clock pull in that is the data arrival time the clock network delays of the data of the data arrival section will be pulled in by 20 percent for example the 13 picosecond delay will look will be not 13 picosecond but somewhere less than 13 picosecond and similarly for all the clock cells in the in the in the in the launch clock path and similar thing we'll be doing a we'll be trying to increase the delays of the clock cells in the capture clock by 20 percent so the values which will be printed over here will be greater than 13 picoseconds will be 20 percent greater than 13 picoseconds similarly the, the value which we see over here that will be 20 percent greater than 21 picoseconds and so on so let's try to do all this and, and let's try to calculate the calculate the uh, slack and we'll see when we actually implement the ocv concept on a on a, on a whole timing section of the of the chip what actually goes wrong and what can go wrong okay so let's try to look into all this in the next video thank you